Lindsay Rachel, she had 17 kills last night. She hit 441, which was a surprise to me, something I didn't really catch in my stat line until I heard Chad Bregelman say it after the game on to the bus ride back home. But for Wayne State, they are a true dual threat with their two middle blockers, Taya Beller and Maggie Bramer. Last night, Taya Beller had seven kills. She hit 250. And Maggie Bramer, 12 kills, 429, her hitting percentage. Taya Beller, the NSIC Player of the Year. She's led by head coach Scott Kneifel, who is the NSIC Coach of the Year. So this is a very decorated Wayne State team coming into tonight. Yeah, and if you're the Huskies, you have got to limit your errors, specifically your service errors. You gave up five service errors in just the third set last night. And when it comes to your offense, you've got to keep that ball away from Jesse Brandle and Kelsey Kada. In the last match between these two teams, Brandle had 17 digs while Kada had 14. So that is huge. That is more than half their team. And for Wayne State, they are 62nd in the country in digs per set, averaging 16.83 coming into tonight. But if Wayne State has a weakness, it is their lack of threats outside of Beller, Bramer, and Kata. No other outside hitter is terminating at an efficiency better than 157 from the Wildcats' big three. So for St. Cloud, it's, all, it's almost kind of a good thing. You know who's going to be hitting the ball at you. You know who you have to keep your eyes on. And yeah. for Wayne State, same can be said about St. Cloud. Well, you that's know also who's going to attack. That's also a problem because once Brandel coming out, then then Bramer goes back in. Once you get Beller coming out, Be excuse me, Pelts comes in. I mean, excuse me, Bramer comes in. They just continue to swap, and there's so much dominance between those two players that it gets so difficult for St. Cloud to counter it. And as long as you're there, your timing on your blocks is on point, then you're good because you really have to watch for those hits. Wayne State coming in number four in the nation in hitting percent percentage. 48th in the nation in kills per set. They are outstanding. And Wayne State, they're number four, but St. Cloud, they're not too far behind at number seven. Wayne State hitting two, 284, St. Cloud hitting 279. So they are nipping at the, they're nipping on the Wildcats here, heels here at the Rice Auditorium on the campus of Wayne State. The thing I want to note about Wayne State, Carl, they have 12 players on their roster where the normal roster that we've seen, oh, for St. Cloud at least, they have 18. We've had, we've had players with all around 20 players. Yeah, we've 20 had teams with about 20 players. So it's very interesting to see at Wayne State with to see how much success they've had with how small of a roster list they have. And, and that's got to come down to having confidence in your recruits. If you have a recruit that you like that much, you believe that they can play that well. You don't have to have a you don't have to have players wait on the bench for years. You have someone who you trust, and that also comes down to coaching. You have so much trust and so much confidence in the players that you bring in that that really that really shows how strong of a program it is. And yesterday, the NSIC went four and zero in the quarterfinals of the Central Region. Starting off, it was Minnesota Duluth taking it down, defending or national runner-ups, we'll say, in Washburn. And then Concordia, St. Paul, and Nebraska Kearney duked it out. Those two, really, the titans of the of the central region historically. Concordia, St. Paul took down the Lopers in five, and then St. Cloud State, they took down the Bearcats of Northwest Missouri in four. And the last match of the night, Wayne State sweeping number 24, Harding, in very convincing fashion. And then earlier today, when it was Concordia St. Paul taking on Minnesota Duluth, Concordia St. Paul took down the Bulldogs 3-1 to one in an opening set that went 25-9 to nine in favor of the Golden Bears. But and yeah, that was anything but hand, handily faster. Excuse me, handily fashion. That was such a... They put it up a fight. It was a very close, but yeah, close match. They put up a fight. It was really exciting. The Concordia parents were in the house. It's been loud here all day. And speaking of fights, it's going to be a barn burner when we come back after the break. It is St. Cloud State taking on Wayne State in the national tournament. Top 32. We'll see who moves on after this. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to 88.1 FM KVSC Husky Volleyball National Tournament about to get underway. Earnhardt, Michael Jaworski, Carl Gunner on the call with you here. Starters for St. Cloud will be the usual set of Zimmerman, Rachel Kirshner, Foley, Holman, Rossi, and Barron. And for the Wayne State Wildcats, it will be Taylor Bunyard, Jordan McCormick, Jesse Brandle, 
Kelsey Cotta, Taya Beller, Rachel Walker, and Maggie Bramer. Bramer donning the fifth, the number 15. When we saw her earlier this year, she was wearing number 18. So that'll be something we have to keep track of. Keely Kirshner will serve nearly capacity crowd here at the Rice Auditorium on the campus of Wayne State as they are the hosts of the Central Region here. Kirshner gets this over. Brendel low set up the middle. Beller. And she goes along, no, just in off the fingertips of uh, Holman yeah, up front. Yeah, say it's off the fingertips, and that's tough if you're St. Cloud. And Not how you want to start this. You want to start this real fast, and you want to start this by shutting down this crowd. It is packed in here. Haven Hines will serve up here. Gets the okay. Hines cer certainly the serving specialist for this team throughout the year. Kirshner. Barron throws it to Rossi up the middle. Rockets one, it's out. Just a little too much on it. And again, we see St. Cloud starting slow here. That's something they did yesterday, and you cannot afford to give up another point against this very talented Wildcats team. Hines out of Huron, South Dakota, keeps us going. Huskies trail by two. Barron, back door, Holman dug out by Hines. Up the middle, Kata. Foley, she's gonna feast, knocks down. It's gonna be a net touch by Wayne State. Huskies on the board here. That is, I, I don't want to say lucky, but that's very fortunate for St. Cloud because that was not looking like it would turn out. Hey, Husky, well. hey Huskies will take it. We saw exactly. Minnesota Duluth earlier today struggle with net touches. Emily Kern's going to shank a serve, have her first service error of the match. Kern, she was right in between the two student sections. Huskies had five service errors in the third set last night. Now and McCormick to serve. Kirshner digs this out. Barron throwing it back to Foley. Threads the needle. She gets another. What a nice spot for Kenzie Foley. Running the thin line on that corner over there. Just barely gets it in. That's a great job. Foley not a lot of room to work with. She gets this serve over. Walker over to Kata. Great dig. Kirshner. Kern runs it down. Just couldn't get a hand up as she had to. Yeah, that's Just tough look for up, Kurt. try to find it. Huskies trail 4 2 here early as we see Isabel Voschek step in now. It will be Brooke Peltz to serve. Kirshner calls. Baron. Rossi wants it. Oh. Can't snipe the back corners. Rossi's call. That was in by a mile. That was very, I would say that was directly on the line. And I don't think this is he's gonna challenge us, but this is not gonna be a good challenge in my opinion. That was right on the line. I think that was in. We'll have to see. Early that's an early challenge for Chad Bregelman. We have the replay right in front of us. So we'll I would look over the balcony. I would say mostly that challenge, what it does right now is it slows the momentum that the Wildcats have. Oh that Ball lands just on the corner. That's I mean right. the corner yeah. of the paint. That's, yep. Oh no, it's ooh, that that's out. That's, that's out. That's that, out. A literal tough Ball bounce. There. I said, yeah, and I, I said it was a bad challenge. I, I had a pretty good close. view right here. In our we, we have a great view here at the Rice Auditorium. I'm, I will say. I'm a little more towards the center here than you, but. And for the Huskies, if they don't get this point, which it doesn't look like they will, they will be down 5-2. Again, still not a bad spot to be. Wayne State is still in striking distance. The Huskies are still within striking distance. As we see the Wayne State student section, I don't know if they're throwing hand signals at us or head coach Chad Bregelman. But there is, it is a, this is probably the most people I have seen at a volleyball game all year long. More yeah, than that's a conference championship. Crazy. Well, I argue yesterday there were a couple more people in this house in their first, in Wayne State's first match of the regional. But yeah, there is, it is packed. As everyone looks on near side official, I think he's wrapping up here. Just wants to take a last look. It is oh so close. I don't know if being on the line is technically in or out. 
That's We're going to have to wait and see head coach Scott Kneifel walking away from his Wildcats, making they seem like they are ready to go. Husky players talking amongst themselves. And the replay has ended here. We're going to have to see how this goes on the scorer's table. Wayne State lost. Loss a point on the board. Wow. We wait, and Wayne State does get the point. Wow. It must be on the line is in. On the line is in. Hold on. Wow. Bregelman having a question. It is 4-3. St. Cloud trails by one here. As Bregelman wins another challenge, he always says he doesn't. Yeah. Bregelman always says he never wins them. He's been doing good here. And the last portion of the season, Rossi gets this serve over. Almost nice. Brandel digs it out. Kata, Rossi just can't dig it. As she's just shanks off of her shoulder and out. And Rossi, you know, she's six two. She's gotten a couple digs this year, but it's not really kind of her spot to be digging out on that back line. She got a bit exposed there. Yeah, well, yeah, they hit it right to her shoulder. She barely had to move. Foley's going to dig the serve out from Walker. Zimmerman back door bounces it off ahead. Wildcats can't get it back. Huskies back within one, 5-4. And now Emma Barron will serve the true freshman. She comes in tonight with 1,179 assists. Walker off the middle, Kirshner takes one to the face and gets back over. Walker dumps it back, Rachel slams it to the floor. What a heads up play. Yeah, I believe that was actually the Almost the neck, I'd she say. Took she took it up high. She's right. looking all the right. Chin or the neck, yeah. Way to take it like a champ. Kirshner, a warrior out on the court. Barron gets another one over. It's just long. Good pass on serve received by the Wildcats. I keep on saying the Bearcats from last night. Not the case. Uh, yeah, I know. I was getting uh, two teams confused last night as well, calling the Bearcats and Wildcats. Kata's going to serve. She dishes up an error. Huskies. We're going to love it. Back tied here, and Earnhardt. This is, for St. Cloud, this is exactly where you want to be at this point. You start slow again, but get back into it. Lindsay Rachel going to serve up now. Walker goes up the middle for Bramer. She's going to find it as Huskies. They were there, but Bramer just putting so much heat on it. Bramer, she's second in the country in hitting percentage, hitting 450 coming into tonight. She's been amazing this year. Help it. That's one of the reasons her team is fourth in the nation in hitting percentage. Barron runs it down. Fully left. Pin swing. Dug out by Kata. Brandel up over to McCormick. Rachel. Barron Zimmerman up the middle with the floater. Popped up Bunyer. Walker. Kata. Rachel feeds fully on the far side, smashes it through the block. Huskies tie it seven apiece. And that's a good job by Sam Zimmerman. She goes up to block it, but has such quick reflexes as she's coming down to pop it up once again. And Keely Kirshner back to serve. Leads the team with 47 aces on the year. Wildcats have a little trouble with it. Kata just has to roll it back. Kirshner resets back to Foley. She's rejected up front by Taya Beller. And for the Huskies, that's where you've got to be aware. Emma Barron, you were right there. But you've got to be ready for that. You've got to be ready to and dig that out. And that's reading your teammates and the blockers on the on for Wayne. You've got to be able to read where they're jumping, not just watching the ball. Hines going to serve. Rachel Barron over to Foley. She gets this one. Holy smokes, Kenzie. As that ball was labeled for the hardwood. Eight all. Emily Kern back in the serve. Her first serve of the night had a service error. We'll see if she can get this one over. She does, chips it off the tape. Brandel, Walker Bramer, and it just looks poetry like, in motion. Yeah, it looked like Kirshner thought that was gonna go out of bounds. And McCormick will serve up here out of Omaha, Nebraska. Rachel, a little bit awkward on the dig. Throws it back to Ross, and again, Rossi long, just out. I'll say she went wide on her swing. I thought that was off of the fingertips. That ball was outside the white lines. Wayne State leads 10-8 here. McCormick, Kirshner gets it. Barron, over to Foley. 
Ricochets up off Walker. Huskies back within one. And now Kenzie fully will serve up here. Roll touch, Kern's gonna get the dig. Barron feeds Rachel far side, block is outscored. Sable makes a good grab. Huskies tied at 10. And Kenzie Foley back to serve out of Sergeant Bluff, Iowa. Not too far away here from Wayne. Foley almost an ace. She's going to get it as the Wildcats have a two-touch. Kenzie Foley with her 36th ace of the year. And a big moment to put the Huskies in the lead for the first time tonight. Yeah, that's really good for Kenzie Foley. She's really stepped up her serving in the second part of the season. Walker caught up, blocked Barron. Wildcats reset. Walker over to Beller. Great dig by Kern. Up high. Barron. Rossi short serve. Just had the door slammed in her face by Taya Beller. Beller third on the team with 108 digs. I'm sorry, that's good enough for second on the team. 11-11 here will be Jordan McCormick to serve. Kirshner down low, gets it. Barron back to Rossi, real telegraph. Is she going to get fingertips? No, she does not. She was calling for it. Rossi wants Rash, it. Their she coach wants to challenge. challenge. I think that's a good challenge. Jacob Voss. That's the correct thing to do here in this situation. Jacob Voss doesn't want the challenge. A couple of Husky players are indifferent about it. Chad will not challenge. Wayne State leads 12-11. Rachel looking to pop this up. Barron. Back to Rachel. Block is out. Good swing by Lindsay Rachel. She Husky. gets her third kill of the night. Able to stay in this as we continue to have a long feeling out period. You haven't had one go this long since earlier in the season. I think this entire match is going to be a feeling out period with how even these teams are. Rossi, good serve. Hines digs. Walker sets up Bramer again. And she finds that back corner is fully just cheats a little too far forward there. And you, and you look at these two teams right now. St. Cloud State with five attack errors while Wayne State has none. Wildcats going to get this over just in. Keeley Kirshner thought that one was going to go long, but just, I mean, that's going to hit the free throw line, which is about, we'll say, eight inches inside the end line. Wayne State now leads 14-12. Walker again. Kirshner gets the dig. Barron up the fully from the 10-foot line, chips it off the net. Walker. Brandel going to set up. Cotta just has to go for floater. Pancake. Kern gets it. Zimmerman backhand dunk. Brandel resets. Shipped. Kirshner. Pancake. And they're going to say that hit the floor. Uh, he might challenge that. I think that would be a good challenge. To be honest, that was. And no, I don't think Chad will challenge this one. Chad's going to call a timeout. Huskies trail 15-12 here in the opening set. St. Cloud, I think they've looked real solid here against the number two team of the nation. And yeah. we're going to throw it to a short 30-second break here on, on 88.1 FM KVSC. And we'll be back for the second round of the regional tournament here for Husky Volleyball. Nolan Walker shoots bar down. Nolan Walker. He's got two now on the evening. And the Huskies, just like that, take the lead back. Looking for your fill of St. Cloud State sports action? He finds Roberts in the left corner. His three is up and good. Another one. All your favorite St. Cloud State sports can be found at KVSC, Radio X, and the KVSC Sports Stream. In the slot momentarily and the Huskies score. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to, to 88.1 FM KVSC Husky Volleyball continuing to get underway. Kirshner's going to dig this. Barron throws it over to Rachel, knocks Brandel to her seat. It gets back over. Barron, back to Rachel. Brandel digs this out. Walker. Bramer up high, Kern. Barron fully from the 10 foot line with a roll shot. Great dig by the Wildcats. Rolled over, finds the line was Bramer. 
There's the miscommunication there for the Huskies. Once again, as you get your, no, excuse me, not miscommunication. They get caught out of position. And Rachel Walker going to serve. She's 26 in the country and assists for set. Kirshner. Barron throws it back. Zimmerman is just forced to push it over. Walker over to Kata. Kern pops it. Kern calls. Rachel throw roll shot. Sneaks it way through. Wildcats going to have to get this back. Kata gets it through the block. Rachel gets it over. Walker resets. Brandel. Here's Kata from the 10-foot line. Blocked by Zimmerman. What a dig by Bramer. Zimmerman got away with a net touch there. Foley. Barron resets back to Rachel. Shanks it off the block up front. As it was Taylor Bunyer who was caught running circles. Back within three though here. The Huskies, you've got to stay resilient. And you go back to a three-hitter rotation. This is, in theory, supposed to be a lot better. Kata shaked up front. Foley can't get to it. And and that in that situation, you got Foley coming up all the way from the corner when Kirshner doesn't have to move that much to move over. You two have got to communicate on that back line. Kelsey Cotter, the search. She's out of Wahoo, Nebraska. She has another service error this evening. Huskies have got to rally here, get this back. Get, excuse me, get a couple points back. You're down within three. You've got to get it back to at least even. 17-14 here, set one. McCormick. Walker up to Beller. Rachel can't run this down fully. Diving save in front of the bleachers. Wow. And Rachel gets it back. Walker. Kata Huskies couldn't get back set in time. Good and eyes by Met Bramer there. So here this has happened two or three times already. They put it right behind those three hitters. And right where Barron can't get over far enough. So if you're the Huskies, you've got to have your back right side start to slide in more. Rachel's going to dig this. Baron Holman up the middle. That's a long fingertip. She gets it as Holman cannons one over. Back within three for St. Cloud. 18-15 here. But right now, Husky's got to get on a roll. Kirshner. Going to get this over McCormick. Walker back to Beller. Blocked Holman. Baron pops short. Rossi with a thunk. That's Picks a good job line. there. And Emma Barron. Doing a really nice job sliding up and then getting out, sliding up to set it and then getting back out of the way so her teammates can move up into the into a hitting position. Kirshner, another short serve dugout, McCormick. Walker gonna go back to Beller. Rossi block again, Brandel. Reset, Walker, throw it over McCormick. Now Kirshner resets. Up for Foley, not a lot of room. Baron, good dig, Kirshner. Rachel's gonna have to get this back. She doesn't get it over the net. There's, that's really gonna hurt. As for St. Cloud, it was good defense, good reaction there. That's, that's you, you, you cannot let that happen if you're St. Cloud. You've got, that's your sixth attacking error compared to Wayne's zero. Foley's gonna dig out the serve. Barron, back door, Holman blocked. Barron flips the court, Foley, Holman, good dig. Kirshner back to Foley, roll shot. Wayne State's tripping over each other. They get it back. Barron fully right up the middle. Pinball's up front. And for Wayne State, they were on the ropes. And, and they still got that ball over. And now for St. Cloud, you had them at a tipping point there. Now you've got a little bit of momentum. And you cannot afford an error here. You've got to play strong and you've got to play consistent. Walker blocked up by our very own Mountain in St. Cloud, Phoebe Rossi. Ladies and gentlemen, St. Cloud is within one, 19-18. They trail here in set one. On a little bit of a run here, you got three points in a row. Hines, over to McCormick, back line, Rachel's there. Baron far side, Foley blasts one, hit the back line. Kenzie Foley ties us up, 19 apiece. That's Foley's fifth kill of the night. And head coach Scott Kneifel for Wayne State gonna call a timeout as St. Cloud State, way too close for comfort. St. Cloud State has quieted this home crowd, getting it back to a tie game. Done an amazing job. And it's, I, I gotta say, it, it's the communication, they, they, they came out and the communication was a little slow. Now you get back into that three hitter, three hitter rotation and, and it came right there.
Vance forgot. It, it's been working a lot better for the St. Cloud State with three hitters up front. They seem to be more comfortable in that in that lineup, and you've just got to be able to pour the points on when that when when you're in that rotation. You do, and for St. Cloud, I was talking to some people today, and I was saying, you know, this is a real coin flip matchup. But if, I think if St. Cloud's going to take it, they're going to need to get some bounces to go their way, get a little bit of luck on their side. Early in the set, they didn't have it, but right now, I'd say St. Cloud. Having, a, having some good bounces go their way as we're tied 19 all here. Emily Kern will serve. Having to do a lot of digs here. The Huskies, a lot of defensive play. 18 digs. Two good blocks. I don't think that's accurate. Excuse me. Kern gets this over. Brandel. Walker caught a blocked up front. Doesn't get over. Wildcats reset. From the back line. Great dig, Kern. Barron. Rossi bumps it over. McCormick. Walker, back door blocked, Rossi, diving save, Hines, Walker still plays it. Rachel steps in. Barrett dumps it over, great dig, Hines. Walker now, McCormick blast, fully called. And three St. Cloud players combined. Bregelman is furious at his players as they froze up. Wayne State leads 20 to 19. That's something we haven't seen St. Cloud State do. All year. That we haven't seen them get, excuse me, run into each other and have that communication that bad since against Concordia last Sunday. Barron tosses it to Foley and Foley gets a touchdown per se. We're back tied 2020. As right now, Carl, if you're seeing 2020, you got perfect vision. And it's Kenzie Foley who's been rolling for the Huskies here. Foley knuckleball serve. Haynes can't really handle it. McCormick all pie almost hits the ceiling. Rachel. Barron back to the well just inside. No. She tried to, Lindsay Rachel there, tried to pick that back left corner again. That's the second or third time she's tried to do that. And That's it really is not paying success. off for her. She struggled with that yesterday as well. Pelt's going to get this Rachel far side. Barron, back to Rachel again. Shanks off the block. And that is where the Huskies have really thrived. Is just shanking off the blocks up front. Something they saw in film possibly of just the blocking for Wayne State. Well, and, and and I will say the reaction timing for the St. Cloud State off blocks ha has definitely stepped up. Walker, throw it over. Bramer Kern, surprised to get called for a touch. Yeah. Rachel bumps it back, not pretty, gets over. Walker, back to Bramer. Great dig, Rossi on the backside. Fully gets one, blasts at the side, the back line, Huskies lead. 22-21. I think they're going to get fingertips on that one, actually. But nonetheless, Huskies doing a great job here. And you watch as Bramer has started to start hitting that ball higher now. As the Huskies have continued to read her hitting low. Walker over to Kata. That's going to find the line. As Kern just stepped the wrong way. Tied 22-22. Wow, An I really thought that one was out. An really. absolute dogfight. Earnhardt, I would not, excuse me. Fully up to Barron. Zimmerman light, touch back over, it's out. Great dodge by Zimmerman. And and yeah, the ability to notice where that ball is and and see how much momentum is on that ball is just phenomenal. And to Zimmer be able to realize where it's coming. And Bregelman's message to, their, to his players right here, right now. Barron to serve, gets it over. McCormick's there. Here's Kata, left pin swing. Good dig, Rachel on the near side. Barron, back to Rachel, blasts it through. Huskies, set point. And Emma Barron serving. You're back in your two-hitter rotation, and we get a timeout here by the Wildcats. As head coach Scott Kneifel going to take his last timeout of the set as his opposition is on set point and for St. Cloud. They lead 24-22. Going back and forth, to and fro. Kenzie Foley has nine kills. She's hitting 500. Lindsay Rachel, six kills, hitting 364. Emma Barron, 17 assists. The lone ace from Foley. Zimmerman has two kills. And Earnhardt, for the most part, St. Cloud State has shut down Taya Beller. That is a great thing to note. Taya Beller on ninth swing has... Two for nine. Two for nine. She's hitting 111. The really, really, it's got... Maggie Bramer has been 
Heron Kada have been the the offense for this team. I mean, Kada's four for 15. Bramer's four for nine. And what did we say in the pregame? The three-headed monster of Wayne State, Bramer, Kata, and Shut Bellard. them down. And, and one of them's been shut down so far. St. Cloud State, set point here in the opening frame. Barron gets this over. Walker up to Bramer, blocked. Zimmerman gonna hit the pin, 23-24. And St. Cloud State, you've got a rebound here, and you've got to rebound strong. Not you've got over to get, just yet. You cannot, let, you have to limit your mistakes. And it will be Kelsey Cotta to serve. Barron going to throw it to Rachel. Fingertips, Brandel. Walker, McCormick, great dig, Kirshner. Barron over to Rachel Little inside. Walker chips it high. Brandel has to reset over to Bunyer Foley. Barron, Rachel smashed off the block and in 24 24. It's not over yet, ladies and gents. It is not over yet. You said it, Earnhardt. St. Cloud State and Wayne State really going to bring it down to the line. Kelsey Cotta to serve. Foley. Barron. Holman, it's a low. Caught on the back line. Walker. Bramer chipped. It's going to be point. Wildcats. And head coach Chad Bregman going to call a timeout this here. Is a good timeout. Earnhardt, I'm not gonna lie, I I almost said something, but this is exactly what I expected to happen. We're, say Huskies go to set point, Wayne State goes to set point, I feel like it's gonna get tied up here, and then the next set point, we'll win it. And for that coaching staff for St. Cloud, head coach Chad Bregelin, assistant coach Marcy Tumalolo, Jacob Voss, and grad assistant Morgan Penner having to talk amongst themselves now that four of them move to the huddle Huskies putting up a wild fight here in the opening set nonetheless. Something very, something to note here is that Wayne State doing a very good job blocking up front. They have definitely scouted Phoebe Rossi. They've held her to minus .333. And for Rossi, a lot of her swings have been the same where she comes to the right pin and she's trying to go cross court. She just and hasn't it's been able to find it tonight. Something she's done such a good job, especially in the past few weeks of doing, is noticing when you need to have a little soft touch and when you need to power that through. And today, it doesn't matter as Wayne State has, has been able to counter both. And Kelsey Cotta will continue to serve. She leads the Wildcats and Aces coming into tonight. She gets her, the okay to serve. I feel like the uh, Let's Go State chant is counterintuitive. Barron. Back to Zimmerman, she finds it, 25-25. 50 points into the set, and we've yet to find a victor. Lindsay Rachel will serve, second on the team with 34 aces. Gets this over, Kata, Walker, Braver, great dig, Barron, it's back over, batted, Kirshner's there. Barron, over to Foley, she doesn't get all of it, gets That's back over. Kata from the 10 foot line, smashes it past Kirshner. 26 25 Wildcats. Kirshner starting to slip up here. That's the second time this back line has gotten confused. You are still in your two hitter rotation here for St. Cloud, and it's starting to hurt you. You've got to get some points so you can get out of this rotation. And now Jesse Brandle to serve. She is the libero tonight for the Wildcats. Rachel, Baron, Zimmerman, backside Kata. Brandle. McCormick's there, Rachel on the back line. Fully big swing, it's out, 26-26. As that was close, I did not think Foley was gonna get it. Keeley Kirshner will serve up here. Kirshner, knuckleball. Walker, Beller, and Barron steps in, rips it away that from is... Lindsay Rachel. All on Emma Barron right there. 27-26 for the Wildcats. And and you know, I hate to call a player out, Earnhardt, but, but that, that's actually Emma Barron and Lindsay Rachel. You two right there, you have to communicate. Hines gonna serve, fully pops. Barron, Ross, yep, the middle. Brandel was ready. Walker, McCormick shanked. Barron, one fist to Rossi back over. Hines, Walker. Beller pushes it back, it's out! Are you kidding me, they call it in? Oh, that was... No way! 
No way. Chad Bregman will challenge this. You have got I to be kidding me. I think this is a me. bad challenge. If, and we have the replay right in front. As I cannot believe it. I think that's in Earnhardt. Oh my goodness. Oh, it does not, oh. get, any, it does not no. get any closer than this. That's out. That's out. That's out. That's out. That's St. Cloud Point. Yes. That is oh so close. This is going to be a quick review. We're going to see if this goes the other way. Will be St. Cloud Point. It is out. 27. 27. Two successful challenges in the first set for St. Cloud State. Amazing. Chad Bregelman knows what's on the line here, and he has come out in full force. That is what a good coach does. Taking this set is crucial. Especially a set that goes this deep. It exactly. is incredibly crucial. Emily Kern to serve. She's going to get this over Hines. It's, whoa, it's in. The corner judge. First called it out, but no point in the flag back in. Husky set point 28-27. Scott could she... knife. Well, now he's going to challenge this. I don't know if she called it out. I think it was more of a boop. Well, her flag went up, then it went back down. Scott can knife. He's not Will good. he challenge? Yeah, he is. No, he shakes no. his head no. Wow. St. Cloud State. Trusts, he trusts up his by defense. One at set point. Kern. Gets this over Brandel. Walker. Here is a Beller blasted through. Kern, it's out. That we continue. Really 28. Tough for 28. St. Cloud State. Kern just not able to move over there fast enough to get a good handle on that dig. Jordan McCormick will serve Lincoln Journal Star and Omaha World Herald All State. And she has a service error. St. Cloud back to set point. 29-28. Kenzie Foley will serve. Will the chapter end here or will another page be needed? Brandel. Walker. Beller blocked up front. Doesn't get over. St. Cloud State takes that one. Against one of the best teams, if not arguably the best team in the nation, St. Cloud State takes the first set, shutting down this pack. Arena, Silencing early. the crowd, St. Cloud State. Carl, what a set of volleyball. That's that have, that huge. Is the best. I know I know. set five against Concordia, we said it was the best set of volleyball we've ever seen. I think this tops it here. Yes, and this he, is extremely, extremely important for St. Cloud here. That is exactly what you wanted to do. You wanted to come in early and break it. And speaking of breaks, Carl, here on 88.1 FM KBSC, we're going to throw it to a short break. And when we come back, it'll be set two for the second round of the D2 National Volleyball Tournament. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to your sound alternative. 88.1 FM KVSC. St. Cloud State has just taken set one off of the number two team of the nation. 20, 30 to 28. Both teams would not give up. And Kenzie Foley, she leads the charge, 10 kills, hitting 500. St. Cloud State has a team hit 280 despite having eight errors compared to the three of Wayne State while they hit 264. Doing, a, doing an amazing job here. The Huskies <laughs> just been able to not just stay resilient. Resi yes, absolutely. That is the perfect word, Carl. Resilient St. Cloud State not giving up. And for St. Cloud State, I do not remember, or for Wayne State, I don't even know if they've dropped a set in their own building this year. They are undefeated in their own building this that year. That is correct. I think the one sets they've dropped this year were to Concordia St. Paul on the opening weekend of NSIC play. But wait, the last loss Wayne State had in this building was against St. Cloud State. Now Jesse Brandel serves up. Kirshner. Barron over to Foley. Blasts one inside the line. Huskies on the board first here in set two. 
Keeley Kirshner going to continue to serve. Kenzie Foley for her, that is kill number 11. Leading the team so far. Kirshner again switches up her serve. Walker up the beller. Rossi has to throw one over, not a lot on it. Walker resets, Beller blasts one just inside Kirshner again. That's the second time we've yep. seen her do it, exposing and, Kirshner like that. And now we see Beller start to heat up. They kept, Huskies were able to shut her down in that last one. And for St. Cloud, you've got to get your momentum back here and you've got to make sure your blockers are on point again. Haven Hines will serve. She just transferred from Northern State last year. Rachel Barron sets it back, fully ignites one, kept up by Beller. McCormick gets it over. Rachel's there on the back line. Barron back set. Holman lurking in the shadows. Wildcats lose sight. St. Cloud up 2-1. St. Cloud still showing the resilience. And, and Earnhardt traveling with the team. We know that this team puts in the work. They are always working on chemistry or communication. Hand-eyed coordination. Whatever it be, Emily we Kern with the ace. We saw him work on communication, hand-eye coordination, we, so it, tossing the oranges. So, ladies and gentlemen, we were on campus, I believe it was On Thursday. Wayne State campus. Yes, on Wayne State campus, waiting for their practice time. And a handful of Husky players, they were throwing oranges, but there were five Husky players throwing five oranges at each other and just catching it, hand-eye coordination. Playing a game. Just, just team bonding, communication, play time, you know? And Having fun. McCormick's going to serve up, chips off the top from that great read by Lindsay Rachel. Fully going to have to twist one, shakes up front off of Beller. And that is a point St. Cloud should not have gotten. Lindsay yeah. Rachel cooking up some breakfast with these pancakes out here. The veteran showing she won't give up or e easily on this season. Fully, good serve. Brandle. Walker over Cotta. Great dig by Fully. Up high. Thrown over to Rachel. Block Foley's there. Good call. Barron backs that. Doesn't get called for a two touch. I can't believe it. And Beller slows up her swing on the, the far side. The St. Cloud State Huskies once again getting caught in that circle again off the, excuse me, after your first hit. That's the second time that's happened for them. You send that hit over, that come back, and your communication is out of black. They get a little bit. They get caught out of guard because they're all watching the ball. And Bregelman asking for some specific play will resume. Kirshner. Barron back to Rossi, just going to throw it over. Wildcats were ready. Walker sets up Kata. That's long. Good duck by Kenzie Foley on the backside. Huskies lead 5 3. And Phoebe Rossi will serve the Rapid City, South Dakota native. Just got her 400th career block last night. Haven digs it out. Walker blasted up front by Bramer. Rossi can't handle. As Rossi just gets exposed when she's on that back line. Yeah, that's something that St. Cloud State has struggled. I mean, it's, it's with your rotations, when Rossi's yeah. right there, it's there's only so much you can do. Exactly. Now Vacek will serve fully. Baron. Over to Rachel, I love the look, and it's a laser from Rachel. That's a great spot. She's been able to find the edge of that line now. She had a couple yesterday and one today where she had to walk that line, but now she's done a great job of finding her spots. Huskies lead 6-4. Emma Barron will serve the true freshman out of Invergrove Heights. Walker, Bramer screaming for it. She's out. That, yeah, and that's Kirshner, out. Kirshner went for the dig. She had the back out of it, pumped the brakes. I don't know. I couldn't. I, I definitely don't have a good enough angle. No, head, excuse me, we had a good angle, but we weren't paying well enough t attention, to be honest. And head coach Scott Kneifel going to challenge a that it grazed off of a Husky player. We're going to try and peek in on this. As the person who does the replay review is, is right Almost in front of us here. Like directly in front of you, Ernie. And yeah, this is going to be oh so close. Be that great either. The camera, I think it's good quality. It just can't zoom in enough. Yep. It's going to be close. I could see this one going either way. I don't think it's going to go off of Kirscher. I think it's going to, if, if It'd anything, be a front it would line. be off of the, yeah, the front blocker. And Kenzie Foley right now, 12 kills. She's in 524. Have a day, Kenzie Doing a Foley. Doing great job. And, and, and Lindsay Rachel, she's got seven for 17, though. She, but she's hitting 235. She's done a pretty good job. And you look at Holman, too, hitting at 
And for St. Cloud State, it's everyone has to get involved for this team to find success. Not only does Foley, Rachel, and Rossi have to get involved, but well, Sam Zimmerman and McKenna Holman as well. And, and you've they seen have done that, that from every team in this tournament here. You saw Minnesota Duluth. They were able to get past that first round, having having to get everybody in. And Concordia has done the same thing. Everybody's had to play a part. Everybody, every single person on your team has to step up and play a bigger part in this tournament. And that's what it comes comes down to. To move on, you all have to be on your A plus plus plus. Have to be play, playing at five hundred percent. Yes, and the big thing to note, I think, why Minnesota Duluth lost today is that their kill leader Selbitska. Selbitska she had two kills all match. They every team she has was been completely able to, shut down. The f past few teams that have played Minnesota Duluth, they have been able to shut her down. As she definitely has had ten kills in this tournament. Replay, replay review still taking place right in front of us. As I think the near side official just wants one final look. This looks like it's going to be a higher up angle on the opposite side of the court. And oh, this one's going to be so close. I'm not exactly sure. There, you, uh, and you got to think it, there could not be enough evidence to change the ruling. St. Cloud fans starting to dance to the music here as they are outnumbered at least five to one inside the Rice Auditorium here. Donnie, doesn't, they're scarlet and doesn't black. Doesn't matter how how outnumbered you are; it matters how loud you are. As it looks like it to be a blackout for the Wayne State College students here in Wayne, Nebraska. I actually like that idea, too. As this is still a lengthy review, Breg Breglin wants them to pick things up. Only so much they can do. Smiles all around. The St. Cloud player huddle there. Emma Barron giving a small wave to Carl and I. And for I the, didn't see it all. And for the Wildcats, they're just, I don't want to say they're smiling, but they're not necessarily frowning either. They're just very content faces. Husky fans continue to dance to the music here. Earnhardt, I wish I had a uh, one of those, those, little, those little watches that flip open so I could look at one of those. I feel like that'd be pretty entertaining. If anything, it'd be a good joke. And, and in the meantime, we're going to look at the other regions, as just as I say so, replay review just ends. We're going to pump the Scratch break that. on that Scratch idea. That. <laughs> and we shall see how this goes. Wayne State's going to get the point here. <laughs> to the roar of the crowd. Huskies still lead 6 5 here in set two. As Kelsey Kata will continue to serve. Kata, 56 in the nation in kills per set. Earnhardt, you think someday they'll have the players wearing gloves so they know they touched it? I think if I think if, if they more get, technology in volleyball would be a very interesting concept. I'm not sure. But I think it would take a lot of money to implement it. And at some point it's going to not be worth it, I feel like. just Volleyball, very simple game. Zimmerman, why she got that over. Walker over to McCormick. Fully good dig. Barron. Over to Rachel, beats the block. Brandel knocked back. Dig. Up the middle, Bramer Barron's there. Great read. Fully right up the gut, blasts Br Brandel. Wildcaps keep it alive. McCormick, Kirshner's there again. Over to Rachel, smash through. McCormick can't handle. St. Cloud leads 7-5. Doing a great job here. The Huskies able to stay resilient. Again, that's the name of the, excuse me, that's the word of the day so far. They have been there at every single stop, continuing to okay. counter every shot. They Rachel has to run back to the baseline. Kirshner going to bump this back over. Walker. Bramer, light touch, great read, Holman. Barron. Sauces, Holman blocked. Fully pushes it back. Brandel, quick turn of events. Huskies reset on defense. Rachel on the backside. Aaron Zimmerman up the middle. She pumped the break. She had it. She thought Foley I, was going to be there. Yeah, I think that's just a little bit of miscommunication. It's the right idea. You're going for a fake there to try and get a smoke screen on him, fake him out, and Foley just wasn't completely on board with it. I don't know. Foley thought she was actually going to hit it and didn't run the play right, but just didn't work out. Yeah. Baroness has to chase this. 
Foley, not a lot of room, blocked up front. And it was just a tough receive. Yeah, Lindsay Rachel sloughed a little too far in there. That's a little bit of slight lapse of judgment. You expected that ball to go over. Seven all here, set two at the Rice Auditorium. Brandel Kirstner gets out the dig. Foley right up the middle, smash mouth volleyball. Hello, Kenzie Foley. Doing a great job here, Kenzie Foley once again, continuing her dominance. Third game in a row with just, just powerful, powerful dominance. Kirshner's gonna get this over. Walker's low, Beller blocked by Rossi, bumped over by McCormick, she was backwards. Lasky's up 8-7. 9-7. 9-7, thank you. They are a little you. slow to change that scoreboard, I will say. A little say. quick on the draw here, what can I say? I'm, I'm excited. This is <laughs> Nothing second not round of the national about. tournament. Nothing but great volleyball up the middle. Beller chipped off of Rossi's fingertips. And now we are seeing the, uh, excuse me, we're seeing the Wildcats start to hit that ball a lot higher. They came out early, hitting real low like they have very often this year. And the Huskies, you you, you game plan that, plan that really well. Haven Hines to serve. She played, she did track for four years back at Huron High School. Fully with a roll shot, Hines is there. Walker. Over to McCormick, great dig. I think it was Kirshner. Barron over to Foley, fingertips. That's gone as Foley labels one to the bleachers as it's just cut from the sky. And we get Kern stepping in here once again to serve. Huskies, the cushion has been two, and this is your time to pull away here in the second set. Kern, she's number two. <laughs> Excuse me, she's number two, has two service aces, two service errors, make it now three service errors for Kern. Service errors are very frustrating. Huskies, they have to limit their errors here tonight. Speaking of Carl. Okay, we're going to scratch that service error. I think they should cancel out like in Cornhole. How many times this year have we seen one team with a service error responded by a service error That's from the other team? That's the second time in this game. It's, it blows my mind how many times that happens. Beller on the outside. Great read. Just sends a floater over. The Huskies, they, they, excuse me, they've done a good job countering those for most, for the most part in this match, excuse me, and that time just a little, just a little too late on it. And now Brooke Peltz is going to serve up. Kirshner's ready for it. Barron, back to Rossi, fingertips. McCormick has to get this back up high. Wildcats, Kern. Barron throws it down. That's a good job by Emma Barron and there. And Kern, that was not the greatest pass, but heads up play by Emma Barron. That's, and one of the things that Emma Barron has definitely, excuse me, one of the things that Barron, one of the things in her game that she kind of needs to improve on is those little dump overs. She's done a pretty good job of it it's this year. It's just timing but them. Yeah, it's big. exactly. Rossi with the service ace, she's 6'2", she towers tall. She gets her 18th service ace on the year and she can do it all can you do another one here that's what matters Hines Walker over to Kata great dig Kern that's that might go be back, back over. over Kern just didn't have the hoff to get up for it and here's once again Huskies get caught ball watching and mm -hmm. and don't don't think I don't want to say you don't think but you're not you're not recapping you're not regrouping Barron over to Rachel, no fingertips. Brandel knocked down. Walker over to Kata. Can she get it through? It's over fully. Barron Zimmerman from just inside the three foot line. Kata again, fingertips. Rachel. Barron down low, bounces down off Zimmerman. Yeah, Barron just doing anything she can to get back there. That is one of the things she's kind of struggling with now is regrouping. Call it Rico, Rico. Huskies lead 13 12. Kirshner, Baron low set. Rachel has to step back. She's blocked. No way. Oh, uh, yeah. I thought that went back on the other side of the net. Huskies get I the thought, point. I, did, I saw the block up front from Wayne State, and I that was, it was like, there's no way Rachel gets you this know, through. We see that a lot where does. it's like, no, it stayed on that side. But, oh, okay. <laughs> Huskies will take it. Walker calls over to Kata. Stutter step. Kirshner's there. Barron back to Holman, lurking in the shadows. Oh, Wildcats wow. double commit. Bramer goes down as she tried to commit it and can't 
just can't reach it as she's almost completely on the ground to try and grab that one. Husky's and again, getting another one. And again, Holman needs a no space to strike. Exa yeah, the agility and the the ability to move on on a snap of the fingers is phenomenal for Walker her. Walker blocked up front. Rachel throws it back. And this is an Huskies? unfortunate turn of events. Huskies lead 16-12. Head coach Scott Knife calls a timeout. St. Cloud has Wayne State exactly where they want them right now. And what more could you ask for coming in? And you have so much momentum now, right now on the longest wing street, most quite possibly in the country. In the country, the thing I had, I have on my board here, St. Cloud State, they have, they're probably the hottest team in the NSIC right now, going against probably the best team all year in the NSIC in Wayne State. And during this time out, we're gonna take a quick look around the country. Looking for big upsets in the Southeast. It'll be Tampa and Barry. Tampa, the defending national champions. Looking to return to the Elite Eight. Currently the number one team in the nation. MSU Denver is down 2-0 to West Texas A&M. Wow. And that is huge. That's massive. That er is that is big. That is something I did not Earnhardt. expect. Huskies holding Taya Beller to 7 for 17. Cotto roll shot. Baron good dig. Kirshner up high. Holman from 10 foot line. She fights it. McKenna Holman strikes again. Holman has just, you know, no, she started the season off a little slow, but has just. I'd say she started quiet and has. Gotten into it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good way to put it. She's gotten into another gear. Towards the end of the season. Kirshner is going to reset. Rachel blasts one knockdown. Brandel again. Beller winds up. Kirshner gets it back over. Brandel. Walker low. Bramer, that's a great set by Rachel Walker. That was a fantastic set. And then the light toss. St. Cloud State caught out of position once again. But they still lead here. 17-13. Kelsey Cotta to serve. She's a Nebraska basketball champion back in high school. Fully right up the middle with some curve. Oh, is it gorgeous. Wow. That's a great <laughs> hit. And, and it's, and, and it's gotta come face. down to the way she moves her arm a little bit to the side, a little more of a side action is what it looked like. Excuse me, side arm. Walker blocked up front, Holman. Touched the pin as it went off a Wildcat. 19-13 for St. Cloud. Did not touch the pin, I believe. Rachel punts another one over with some force. It's just too much on it. That's her second service error, if not her third here in this one. Excuse me. That's her second. And now Brandel will start out. She's out of Stanton, Nebraska. She's had a great night so far. Barron, Holman up the middle. Beller gets it back. Barron, Kirshner feeds fully. Brandon has to run back to get it. She does. Walker over to McCormick. Barron's there again. Kirshner. Holman chipped up front back line for the Wildcats. Gets it. Beller blocked. Oh, gets it through wow. Foley, and she was right there. Yeah, just not having her hands up, excuse me, out far enough on that one. You gotta get your hands a little closer to the net, but still above it so you don't touch it. And that's how you just, just. Credit to Foley, she was yep. there. Just too much force on it, Brandel. Barron up the Foley, up the middle. That's a good job there, St. Cloud State, yes, realizing sir. that she, excuse me, realizing that McCormick was down ready to dig that and just putting it just out of reach for her. Huskies lead 20-15 here in set two. Kirshner. That's a good serve. Oh, Beller throws it over. Just had enough height. Rossi, oh my God. <laughs> there it is. Kind of side swipes it. Didn't she hit all of it, ball. but it worked. Rossi wanted to looked like staple it, this to the ground. Looked like it like just hit it. her thumb. Huskies 21-15. Kirshner again. And Kirshner with an aces. Beller bobbles it, fumbles the bag. It is a seven point game. 
Kneifel's tiny, calling a timeout here, Earnhardt. Wow. And here on 88.1 FM, St. Cloud leads 22-15 in set two. And when we come back after the break, it'll be the conclusion of set two here on your sound alternative Husky Volleyball National Tournament. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to KVSC Husky Volleyball National Tournament. Round two. Back underway, Earnhardt. Huskies currently lead 22-15. Kirshner, a great dig. Barron, up to Rossi, rockets one, gets back over the net, Holman resets. Barron throws it to Foley, oh my goodness, it's labeled to the hardwood, Kenzie Foley. Huskies are two points away from taking the second set here, Earnhardt. And for Kenzie Foley, she just thumped this one home. 23-15 for St. Cloud. Yeah, using that force and a nice downspin on that ball. And Kenzie and Keeley Kirshner with another service ace tonight. Husky set point. As Kirshner just served up something wicked. No timeouts left for the Wildcats. Keeley Kirshner gets it over. McCormick. Walker. Beller chipped up front. It's out. Wildcats live to see another day here in set two. Huskies still on match point. Excuse me, set point here. As there's a quiet and for Haven Wayne State crowd here. In Haven her. Hines, she did volleyball, basketball, and track and field for four years. That is an athlete at its finest. Foley. Barron, low, Rossi, thunders one, pinballs, Wildcats are going to get this back. McCormick blocked up front by the Mount Everest, Phoebe Rossi, St. Cloud State takes set two. Phoebe Rossi, one member. Oh, excuse me, Phoebe Rossi, over 400 blocks, helping the Huskies to take the first two sets against the number two team in the nation. And just like that, St. Cloud is up 2-0 over the number two team of the nation, Wayne State. And here on 88.1 FM KVSC, we're gonna throw it to a break and when we come back, it'll be set three between St. Cloud State and Wayne State College. Don't go anywhere. Kirshner's gonna serve up, gets it over Hines. Walker over to Beller, cuts it inside of Rossi. Wayne State up to 12. Doing a good job there. Did the Wildcats able to find that ball and get up and block it? This one gets over. That would have been out. Rachel grabs it. Barron up to Rossi. Forced to throw it over. Picks the back corner. I'm just surprised how that play works. There's not a lot of force on that ball. It's very horizontal. Doesn't not very doesn't drop a whole lot. Back line for the Wildcats. Not ready. Huskies within three. Walker now over to Kata, current tripped up. As she just kind of faked herself out, 13-9 for St. Cloud. Rachel Walker's gonna serve, she's been phenomenal as a setter, 21 assists already tonight. Rachel Barron, over to Foley, far side, Kenzie Foley wrecks it. And for Barron, she had some tempo on her set there over to Foley. Brandel shanks it. And now McCormick forced to reset. The Barron over to Rachel. Brandel, that's going to tickle the that's rafters. That's going to go too long, yep. And I was afraid Jordan McCormick was going to go head first into the front yeah, row of the bleachers. Right. She backed out of it. Huskies within two now. And for St. Cloud State, Foley gets it over. Brandel, she's been struggling with these. Serve receives, Foley's there on the back line. Good pass up to Rossi with a bit of a twist. Wildcats all over the place. Bunyer, Kern can't pancake. And for St. Cloud, they have the Wildcats up on the ropes. And St. Cloud just unable to finish off the Wildcats there. They trail 14-11. Set. Three. Kirshner up high. Foley over to Rachel. That's a lot forward. Pushed up front. McCormick's there. Walker. Back door. Bramer. Kern's not ready. 
And Bregelman's gonna call his second time out of the set. As St. Cloud State is just struggling right now. I mean, I, I, I would be surprised if it goes to three, if it ends in three. We know these are both super talented teams and we know this is gonna be a battle. Uh, we said it in set one, it's gonna be a, it, it will be a battle for the ages and so far I think it has been just that. So here at the timeout, St. Cloud State trailing by four. We've seen them trail as much as seven earlier in the year, eight, excuse me, in this conference semifinal against Augustana. St. Cloud State then went on a 14 and three run to win the set. Yeah, and I mean, they've done a great job this year. They, 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 they have shown that they can be resilient and step it up when they need to. And for St. Cloud State, I think they can just, I think they are sitting all right right now. Don't get comfortable against Wayne State. But Kelsey Cotta will continue to serve. Nebraska Volleyball Champion. Last year's on the NSIC second team. Rachel fires one, picks the back corner again. As Lindsay Rachel gets her 13th. Now Phoebe Rossi will serve up. She already has a one ace on the night. Bit of a knuckleball. Wildcats, a little bit of trouble. Bunyer. Barron wins the joust. It balances on the net for a second. McCormick blocks Ooh. Zimmerman. Brandle over to Walker. Low caught a fully great dig. Barron over to Rachel with the floater. Wildcats look to regroup. Bunyer fully on the backside. Barron. Zimmerman button hooking. Doesn't get over the net. Net play called dead. Saint Cloud, yeah, you 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 you've been able to keep it within four. You just have to be able to close this gap. Fully. Baron Zimmerman off the block of McCormick. Huskies back within three, 16-13. Emma Baron to serve. She's got 27 assists on the night. Has a service error as well. Hopefully doesn't add. Two, it chips it off the tape. Walker, Bunyer blocked, Rachel. Bunyer again, great dig by Barron on the backside. Kirshner, fully right up the middle, swing and a miss, Rachel Walker. Doing a good job there. Foley's got 20 on the night, wow. That is outstanding, that, wow. Foley's career high is 27. Walker, over to Bunyer didn't get a lot on it. And they catch, yeah, they catch the Huskies a little bit off, a little off guard. They weren't expecting that ball. They were expecting it to go long again, but. And Bunyer back in high school qualified for the Nebraska State 400 meter dash and 400 meter relay. So she's got some agility. Haven Hines gonna serve up again, fully. Baron backdoor Zimmerman. That's oh. not even close to being over the net. St. Cloud, no timeouts to give. And that hurts a lot right now as you cannot start making those little mistakes. Hines again out of here on South Dakota Miss Volleyball a couple years ago. Rachel. Baron back to Rachel off the back foot. Fully good recovery. Rachel again blocked. That's going to be a lift by the Wildcats. Huskies back within three, 18 15. That's a good job by Tenzi Foley, able to get it down and dig that ball. And the whole St. Cloud State team, they were all ready to get that ball. And then to be able to run that offense, that attack again. Walker low set up high. McCormick fully. Barron feeds Holman, picks the back line. Wildcats. Struggling to communicate, good chip. Rachel's there on the backside. Barron, up the Foley again, not over the net. That's the second Couldn't, attack. She just, she just ran into a dead end there. That's a second attacking error there for the Huskies in the past couple points, and that's gonna that could really hurt you. Wildcats serve up again, short serve. Rachel's ready. Barron, back door, Zimmerman. It's a light. Heinz keep it keeps it alive. Fully one-handed save. Barron fully off the back foot. Brandel gets it. 
McCormick, Beller, Rachel's there backside. Barron, over to Foley, flips the court, oh. boom, bullseye again, Brandle keeps it alive, kept up Rachel. Barron, over to Foley, second time, Zatarm as Foley mangles it. Brandle is putting her body on the line out there for Wayne State, but Kenzie Foley, meanwhile, wow, what a cannon on her arm, definitely the Terminator really suits her. Kirshner short serve, Hines has it. Walker, back to Beller, and that's shanked off of Rossi up front. Yeah, neither. Hard to read the deflection. Neither Lindsay Rachel or Emma Barron able to get a good hand on that. Huskies trail 2016. Kirshner low, Barron has to pop that up high for Foley. The block Lindsay was Rachel. there, but it doesn't matter. Kenzie Foley finds a yep. way. That's number 20. Three for Kenzie Foley. Oh, is that? Yeah, wow, just an amazing hit. Excuse me, I thought that As was Lindsay Kenzie Rachel. Kenzie Foley is literally on fire. Kern, that's a long serve. 21-17, St. Cloud State can't get past this. That's four-point buffer. That's her fourth service error of the night, Emily Kern. Walker will continue here. Kirshner, Kern, this is gonna be off the Foley, that's gonna be blocked. As it was just Kern trying to go cross court, trying to do too much with it. This wasn't a great look. Huskies trail by five now. Leighton set three, much to the delight of the crowd here at Wayne State College. Kirshner, Baron Rossi up high. Brandel's gonna reset for Kata pushes it, Kern steps in. Baron Rossi throws it over Brandel. Beller, fingertips, great jump by Rachel on the back end. Foley smashes, fingertips off the ceiling, off the light, Brandel recovers. Kern, Baron, Rossi, good night! St. Cloud State back within four here. That's kind of been the cushion in this match for the Wildcats and the Huskies. You've got to use your momentum. You get, got off of that set and start to close that gap. Fully bats this over. Hits McCormick high, Brandel. Beller from the 10 foot line. Rachel up high, Fully gets it. Rachel's gonna have to bump this over. Huskies have to try again, it's out. 23-18 for St. Cloud. That whole time St. Cloud State had the ball on their side there. That was a little bit chaotic for them. And that's just this little mistake by Lindsay Rachel. Beller only has two service aces on the night. Not going to get a third here. Foley up the middle, off of Beller. Back to four. Now we see Rachel Hool step in. It's got to be Hool to serve here. As Rachel Hool, as we've seen Kern, she was in the serve. Now she's, she has four service eight errors, excuse me, tonight. Hool Kern. gets one over Brandel. And it is Maggie Bramer shanks it off the block up front for St. Cloud. Kern Green there. State to set point. And Kern there just sloughed in too far once again. As you have Lindsay Rangel sloughing on the far side, Kern has to wait in the back again. 24-19, set three. Kirshner, Barron, Kern's gonna have to get this back over. Walker, Beller chipped fully on the backside. Barron. Rachel shanks it inside. I love the look. Huskies love to see another day. Able to, yeah, able to thread the needle in between the two blockers and get out, get right in between your left side hitter at Beller and your back line. 24 points. Barron to serve. Brandel low. Walker. Beller with the roll shot fully. Barron over to Rachel. She's blocked. It's out. Huskies continue to chip away. 24-21. They have to get these next three points, but they're going to start with this first one. And the Baron will serve. The true freshman. Walker. Back to Beller. Baron Holman. It's back over McCormick. Walker. Beller looking to finish. Foley. Baron. Rachel. Off. Off wow. of Walker. Now it's back within two. St. Cloud State, you are on a roll. Four points in a row. Timeout. Wildcats. St. Cloud knocking on the door. They're not knocking lightly. 
St. Cloud trails 24-22, set three here. As head coach Scott Kneifel gonna try to ice the Huskies. Yeah, you said Earnhardt, icing the kicker. Version in volleyball, ice the Huskies. St. Cloud State, you've just gotta keep doing what you're doing. You cannot spare an error. One error and it's over, this set is over. You need to get minimum two points straight here. It was 24-19, it's 24-22. Yep. Huskies are on a four point run here. St. Cloud State, I think you're, I think you are playing well. You are playing the number two team of the nation and you are running right with them. Exactly, you have been, you've been playing consistent and resilient all night. You love to see it. Coach Bregman has done an amazing job with this team. Emma Barron to serve. Gets the green light. Short. What a serve. serve. Gets it back over. Barron going to set up Holman. I don't like the look. It's a long. Huskies get the point. Fingertips. Wow. And head coach Scott Kneifel. Yeah, he's going to challenge this. I, I think it's a good challenge I either too. way. That was a very high hit ball. And in the meantime, we'll take a quick look around the rest of the country here for the national tournament. And did it happen? The number one team of the nation, MSU Denver, has fallen 3-0 to West Texas A&M. Wow. 3-0. And then number six, Southern New Hampshire takes down Adelphi 3-2. Southern New Hampshire will advance to the Elite Eight. Well, you know, it really shows. D to Division II volleyball, there are competitors everywhere. Everywhere. Any given, as they say in football, any given Sunday. But in volleyball, I guess it's any given match. Any given match. Any given night. Any given set. So much power, so much prowess from around the league for on, on so many levels, too. And then in the semifinal for another region, Gannon will take down Charleston, West Virginia, 3-2. to two. They will play Clarion in their regional final tomorrow. Tampa and Barry, and I believe that's going to be Southeast. Wingate and Flagger, that's the one in six seed. Flagger taking down Carson Newman in the quarterfinal, and then Augusta in the semifinal, three to two. As volleyball all over the country here. But here in the central region, it is gonna be a close one. I'm surprised they are still looking at this as it's gonna, again, we had one earlier where if it was a fingertip touch or not, and it was oh so close. There's been a lot of calls that were oh so close here. We're gonna have to see And again, oh, it looks like replay review gonna finish here. We're gonna look at the scoreboard. 25 goes oh. to Wayne State. That will be yep, the that's set. Gonna be a Wayne. Yep. St. Cloud State drops set three, 25, 22. But you're still up here. You still have two sets to one. This is time to close it out. This we, is the same thing we saw last night yep. against Northwest Missouri. St. Cloud State, they win sets one and two. Well, and you look at the, la the match St. Cloud State had when they won the NSIC championship against Concordia College, took the first two sets, won the fifth. Granted, we don't want to go to set five. I you want to close this out as soon yes, as possible? Yes, close that out as soon as possible. So here on 88.1 FM KVSC, after the short break, it'll be set three. Set four, excuse me, between the Wildcats and the Huskies here in the D2 National Volleyball Tournament. Do not go anywhere. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to your sound alternative, 88.1 FM KBSC. Huskies, they drop set three, and the big plaguing factor for St. Cloud was their nine attacking errors that set as they hit 238. Kenzie Foley leads the charge with 24 kills. She's three away from breaking, a, from tying her career high of 27. Fully currently hitting 444. And for Wayne State, they hit 275. Kelsey Cotta and Taylor Beller with 12 kills apiece. Maggie Bramer with 13. She's in five, 
542. So well, and, and, and you look at both of these teams, St. Cloud State doing a pretty good job holding back the attack of the Wildcats, holding them to 275, but Wildcats, mind well, meanwhile, excuse me, held the Huskies to 235, 238 in that one. McCormick's gonna keep us going here. Set four, Barron over Foley, shakes it off the block again. That is where the Huskies have made that's their money. Start. Yep, that's a great start. That's, uh, I believe that that's one of the, if not the first set that they scored the first point. Kirshner, that would have been long. Walker, Beller pushes it right to Barron. Kirshner, Foley, she's not gonna have a lot of room. Fingertips diving save McCormick, Walker runs it down. Beller, Barron, Kirshner gets that over. Wow, Huskies survive. Walker, over to Kata, floater, just chipped off of Rossi. Well, and a great job there by Lindsay Rachel, able to keep that play going. Just, just, just an amazing dig, just completely down. Couldn't tell if it was a dig or a pancake, but just a great job by the veteran. Brooke Pelt serves up. Rachel's there, up high. Barron, Rossi down low to the flow. 2-1 yes. St. Cloud. Stone wall. A member of the Great wall from Hollenbeck Hall. Phoebe Rossi putting in the work up front the again. the nail to the floor. Exactly. <laughs> Emily Kearns ready to serve, but she's cannot afford she an error get a ball there. Kern now gets this over. Kata. Walker going to go back to Kata here. Blocked fully. That's back over. Walker back to Kata again, Kirshner. I think St. Cloud thought that was gonna be out as yep. you saw Lindsay Rachel dodge away from it. You've gotta have a better judgment than that. And Usually she's one of those players. Time out here as looks like Phoebe Rossi leaking a little bit of life fluid here. A little, a little bit of bandage timeout. Bit, yeah. The skin a little, that dry skin on your finger, you get a little bit of blood. Yep, I think she's gonna be all right. Marcy Tumalolo gonna have a oh, quick chat yeah. with Emma Barron. The relationship between those two is very... As Rossi, yep, she's gonna get a little bit of tape on her finger here. Rossi with a big grin on her face. She's really a spark plug for this team. Yeah, really it's, it's such, a, such a strong leader. She's very strong leader. Really played a, a, an amazing role for this, play, for this young team. This, so, excuse me. Two all here, set four. Walker serves, Kirshner up high. Barron, Rossi again blocked, Kirshner gets it back. Here's fully blocked. Rachel just couldn't jump up. Not enough height in their hops. Wildcats lead 3-2. Yeah, that's how, I mean, yeah, Rachel, you can't get high enough. Usually her, her vertical off of her running, off of her running is usually better. And, uh, Speaking of running, a walker gonna have a service error. Yeah, we Three see. all, yeah, Huskies will take time. every point they can get here. Kenzie Foley will serve. To, got it over the net. Walker, Bramer, that's out. That's, that's really tough for Bramer. You're trying to pick that near side corner right in front of the net and go, go angle it right. And for Bramer, she had space to work yeah, with. There's too much on it. Foley gonna have a service error of her own. Goes along on this one. Wildcats had the second, third guess themselves there. That's her first service error of the night for Foley. She had a couple last night. No, excuse me, her second of the night. Kelsey Cotta will serve up. Had 19 kills earlier this year against St. Cloud. Barron gonna go back to Rossi. Splits the middle between Walker and Cotta as they were just, yeah, does it, just didn't communicate. Yeah, they well, and the communication that ball think, was very diggable. I think they diggable. all thought that was going out. out. It's, that's a lapse of judgment in my opinion. Huskies lead 5-4. Rossi serves. Brandle. Walker. Bramer wants it. Throws it. Kern. Going to get blocked up front. Bramer. No net touch. I really thought there was a net touch on that one. I'm a little surprised. And Jesse Brandle will serve. Gonna get that, Rachel's there. Baron, back to Rachel, yes sir! Lindsay Rachel. 
gets another on the board. She's got 17 on the night. Huskies lead 6-5. Barron serves with some pace on it. Walker, Beller blocked off of Rachel. That's it, yeah, it goes out of bounds. And you continue to stay deadlock here, just and, alternating points. And Brigelman, he's happy with that block. You know, Zimmerman and Rachel were right there. Yep. Yeah, it's a right idea, it just didn't pan out the way you wanted. Heinz to she had 3,000 digs at Huron High School. Rachel. Barron throws it to Zimmerman. Heinz has to get low for it. Here's McCormick, fingertip fully on the back line. Barron back to Rachel, splits the defense as it's striked off of her hands. That's a good job. So they, you, you, you put that just out of reach to where they either can't hit it or they're gonna have to dive for it and, and, and you have a pretty decent chance of it sliding over their arms. Lindsay Rachel Hines. Walker back set, Beller, Kern steps in. Barrett, fully not a lot of room, chipped up. Walker, over to Beller, that's off of a shoulder of Foley. Earnhardt, I think in that last volley there, you saw Keely Kirshner trying to do a little too much. Yes. She's sliding to Out of system. Sliding too far in, and then she slid too far to the left. Kirshner digs, Barron oh, feeds Foley. She wow. feasts the beast, Kenzie Foley. That's number 26 for the Sergeant Bluff native. And, and this, this, this three three hitter rotation has just been has been amazing for St. Cloud State right now. They, they look so strong. Kirshner low set. Brandel, that's up high. Beller almost on the bleachers. And McCormick forces a short bump it over. Holman. Barron. Rossi back over. Heinz Holman digs. Rossi lets one rip. Finding the wide open wow. space right behind. Excuse me, Jesse Brandle, who seemed phased there. I was like, she probably could have hit it, but just missed it. Very, very rarely do we see Phoebe yep. Rossi tee up up front of the net. Kirsten, again, she has some force with her serves. Beller shanked off the block of Rossi inside. Huskies still lead at 9 8 here in set four. Huskies took sets one and two. And you've got to remember the Wildcats, they are resilient. They're as the well. number two team in the nation exactly. for a reason. You are not out of the woods at any point for St. Cloud. Rachel, up to Barron, over Foley. That's the great, great eight thrives again. Yeah, picking that back left corner. Great eight, the Terminator. The aim has definitely been, the aim is definitely dialed in for Kenzie Foley. As Foley has 26 on the night. Walker, over to Beller. Rachel falls down and she digs it. Barron over to Foley. I can't believe it. Kenzie Foley ties a career high. 27 on the night. Wow. That's an amazing job for Kenzie Foley. Such a, such a phenomenal player. Kern steps up, serves Kata. Walker back to Kata. Block. Kern can't handle it. 11 to 9. Walker gets this over. There's Rachel. There's Baron. Rossi, another rip from the heavens. 12 9. Wow. Kenzie Foley will serve. Gonna get this over. McCormick gets that one way up high. Walker over to Kata. Rachel on the backside. Baron just gonna feed Rossi because why not? Do it again, Phoebe Rossi, shock one to the floor. Show, showing the resiliency she has and the power. As head coach Scott Knife are gonna take a timeout, and then here on 88.1 FM, we will take a short 30 second timeout, and when we come back, it'll be set four for the national turn between St. Cloud State and Wayne State College. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the sports booth here on 88.1 FM KVSC Husky Volleyball underway. Carl Gunner, Earnhardt, Michael Jaworski here on the call. Huskies currently leading set for 13-9. And Kenzie Foley's going to get herself an ace. That will be her 
36th on the year. Huskies lead 14-9. Kenzie Foley, who has tied a career high right now of 27 kills in the match, looking to break it. Walker, caught a light touch, Kern steps in. Barron, Rossi just a light touch over Wildcats all over the place. Kern steps in. Barron, here's Rachel, knocks Brandel down again. Rachel gets the kill, 15-19 St. Cloud. And Kenzie Foley actually has set a new record for herself on kills, getting 28 on that last set before we took the break. Good eye there, Carl. Thank you very much. Brandel now. Walker caught up trying to fuel her Wildcats off of Foley. 15-10. St. Cloud State, you have got to get the momentum back here. You can't let the Wildcats get any closer. Yeah, they're stuck in this two-hitter rotation right now. Caught it. With the service error, that's got to be, that is number three for Kelsey Cotta. And uh, that that's, that's big. really hurting you right now. The thing to note, St. Cloud State, they're 70th in the nation in service aces compared to the 182nd to the Wildcats. Walker, Bramer, Foley's there on the backside. Rachel oh. just a roll shot, gets it over Huskies, regroup, here's Cotta up the middle, Foley's there, middle. Barron with a two-touch. <laughs> She's going to laugh that one off. She's like, I screwed that one I up. I kind of see it, yeah. It was, what? She wasn't sure what she wanted to do with it. Yeah, it, it was a little, I would say, just angling it too much yep. makes it look more like a two-touch as well. 16-11, Brandel. Barron, Zimmerman blocked. Foley cheated too far forward. Wayne yeah. State within four. And th that's something you really don't see from Foley very much, especially in the last few weeks. She has been sitting back there, and all, she's been on point on defense. She had 26 digs against Concordia. Brandel's going to get this over. Rachel. Bear and back to Rachel. She's blocked up front by Bunyer and Beller. And Bregelman's going to call a timeout. As St. Cloud State not passing well. Forcing their hitters into bad positions and just giving some freebies to the Wildcats. Yeah, Husky, yeah, you, 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 again, you, you've got to get some momentum back here. It, you, you've got to get a couple ser good serves, get some, e get some easy points here quick. Excuse me, there are no easy points. You've got to get some points here quick, go on a little bit of a run, and you'll be in better shape. Just I, honestly, if you're Coach Bregelman, your your three hitter line rotation has looked very, very good, and and right now in this two hitter rotation, they've struggled. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, you're you're struggling. We've seen it all match long. That two yep. hitter rotation is really ideally the three hitter hitter rotation is supposed to be better, and it has it has continued to be a lot better than the two in this one. So St. Cloud just kind of stuck in a rough rough patch right now. We'll yeah. see. Coming out of the timeout. 16-13, they still lead, but the Wildcats are nipping at their heels right now. Jesse Brandle will serve. Gets this over, Foley. Baron low, Rachel, she's blocked up front as Huskies just got a bit jumbled up front, yep. crossing into each other's paths, 14-16. Wildcats within two now. Your back line once again gets caught out of position. Brandel, Foley, Barron, here's Zimmerman up the middle, zips it inside. 17-14. Invader Zim coming in to Rish Auditorium and putting another one on the board. Bregelman saying good job. Emma Barron will serve up now. Gonna get this one over, Brandel screaming for it. Walker. Beller speaking of Screamer Foley. Kirshner can't get it again as Beller just had a two oh for. Oh my gosh. The NSIC player of the year, Taya Beller, putting Ta showing Kenzie her Foley label. on the, her back. Haven Hines going to serve up here. I think there's some moisture on the court. No line judge. Yep, now we're going to get the towel out. Towel comes off the bench. That's Makes a, his first debut of the night. It's a much smaller towel than we're used to at St. Cloud. I will say Put that. Put some work in. 15-17. St. Cloud still leads by two. Not out of the woods in any mean whatsoever. 
Number seven, St. Cloud, and number two, Wayne State going at it. Rachel Lodig. Barron, back to Zimmerman. She's blocked up front, that Huskies. Goal. Oh, wow. I, I, I like the look from Zimmerman, but I think the Wildcats were just kind of tuned into it. Yeah, and that one goes off of Zimmerman's chest. You always want that one back, and she's, her reaction timing isn't as well as it was in that last set. You've got to get back in your own mindset here. For as the, the Wayne State fans are on their feet, Hines going to get this over fully. Barron, here's Rachel Block, gets through. Huskies silence the crowd. Yeah, back with, they extend their lead back to two here. Huskies are in a pretty good situation. You've got a little more momentum here. You've got to extend it some more. Extend the lead some more, excuse me. Lindsay Rachel right up the middle, serve. Brandel, Walker, Beller blocked by Kenzie Foley. Foley calling out all the stops here now. Huskies lead at that's, 19, that's, and that, 16. And that's one of the things that Kenzie Foley does so well here, Earnhardt, is she can be in the back corner and then come up block, get back, dig, come back up and block, then attack. She's so talented. Walker, Beller, she's going to get this one through. 19-17. Again, Wayne State right there. McCormick's going to serve. Rachel, Barron over to Foley, block is laid, it's back over. Barron, Kirshner has to reset this, Foley, not a lot of room, she's blocked, yeah, that one ball go goes out. out, 29 for Foley. That is crazy. <laughs> Emma As Barron got kind of... Rossi a little excited to get back into her. the play here. Runs Emma into Barron, Barron, not looking too hot here. Kirshner, Brandel, Walker, Going over to Kata. Holman just can't do it all by herself. That one, I'm a little surprised it wasn't out. 20 was to 18, close. St. Cloud leads. Wildcats still have a single timeout. St. Cloud with two. And will be Brooke Peltz to serve three-time All-State honorable mention. Kirshner, Baron, Rachel from the three-meter line, pushes it over. McCormick, over to Kata. Kirshner, Baron. Foley again blocked. Wildcats, they're going to get this back. I can't believe it. Rachel reset. Foley tries to go backside. Walker. Bramer forced to push it. Finds the pancake. Just, just can't get, the, and, well, can't here's get the there. Thing. Here's the thing. It's Kenzie Foley. or Yes, Kenzie Foley goes in for the pancake. Gets it. But once she gets the pancake, the whole team relaxes. The whole team this freezes takes a up. big breath and, and thinks they're okay because they think everyone else is going to be back on to on point. You have to be ready for that second spot, second hit off of the pancake. You have got to be on point against this extremely talented Wayne State Wildcat team because they will make you pay. This Wayne State team, Carl, deadly is how I would put it. Currently, Kelsey Cotta and Taylor Beller both have 17 kills. Bramer with 15. Yeah, Bramer hitting at 480, and, 43. And it, it, those three, Bunyer has three kills. McCormick with one, Brandel with one. Can Bramer. St. Cloud State leads 20 to 19. Foley with 29 kills, hitting 429. Everyone is on their feet in the building as they know what is on the line between these two phenomenal volleyball programs. But only one can advance. St. Cloud leads 20 to 19. Kirshner. Barron over to Foley blocked. Barron's there. Kirshner has to reset. Foley again. She gets it. That's 30 for Kenzie Foley. Having a career night is Kenzie Foley. Perfect she time knew to she do needed so. to step her game up, and she has. This entire St. Cloud State team is a well-oiled machine. Kern, good serve. Walker over to Kata. Block a little late. Kern just not high enough. 21-20. Man, this is just no quarter given volleyball. Yeah, no. Yeah, you said it. No quarter given here, Earnhardt. This is... Rachel Walker to serve. It's long. St. Cloud State goes up 22-20. And that was a close one. Good pass on serve received. And for St. Cloud State, this is where you go on a run. 
This is where you shut down, quiet down this crowd. Foley, simple serve, gets it over. McCormick, Walker going back to Kata. Chipped up, Kearns there on the backside. Barron, Rachel blocked, Foley, Kirshner. Rachel throws it, McCormick diving save. Walker, Kata again, blocked by Phoebe Rossi and Emma Barron. The Saint. Great wall from Hollenbeck Hall. Two founding members, Emma Barron and Phoebe Rossi. St. Cloud State leads 23-20 here. Late in set for Kenzie Foley. 30 kills on the night. Absolutely demolishes a career high. And St. Cloud State, oh so close. Smiles on the bench all around. Smiles on the bench, head coach Scott Kneifel. I'm sure he's cooking something fierce up right now. The NSIC head coach of the year. Such a talented coach. Done such a good job with this program in his 18th season. Both these teams have played phenomenally here. And it's just all coming down to the wire. There's nothing better than this. On the floor for St. Cloud, it'll be Rossi, Barron, and Rachel up front. Foley, Kern, and Kirshner on the back line. Kenzie Foley. She gets the okay to serve. No timeouts for either side left. Foley. Kata. Walker going to go back to Kata with the floater. Kern steps in. Good touch. Barron. Over to Rachel. Mono e mono. Lindsay Rachel oh, finds it. You're kidding me. It's that's out. That's out. Yeah, that one was really close. He's going to challenge us right away. I don't, Earnhardt, honestly, Why I don't really think that was a good challenge. Bregelman, he's two for two on the night. That's true. I'm thinking this one going to be in. It's going to be just another close one here at the Rice Auditorium. We're going to see, and again, Lindsay Rachel with another Extremely close one. I think that's in. We're going to have to wait and see. Going to be two looks here for the near side official. I think that's in, ladies and gents. I do too, actually. That's a very, very good view. And it will be St. Cloud point. St. Cloud is on match, match point. point. Kenzie Foley to serve. Bregelman's message right here, right now. Finish strong. St. Cloud State, Foley to serve. Walker, Kata, blocked, Foley. Barron, over to Rachel. And Lindsey Rachel. No, that's out. Lindsay Rachel goes along. I thought she had it. And Bregelman, why not? He's going to challenge it. Ooh. I can't believe it. I don't think that's a good challenge. Oh, you know what? Actually, if you're going for fingertips, I think that's a good, that, that could be a pretty good why challenge. Why not? I thought Lindsay Rachel had it. Not just yet. And here on... 88.1 FM KVSC, we're going to throw it to a short 30-second break. When we come back, it'll be the conclusion of the replay review. We'll find out who gets the point here. Welcome back to the sports booth here at 88.1 FM KVSC. Your sound alternative. It is Husky Volleyball Action. Men's Ice Hockey on 97.5 Radio X over in Colorado Springs. St. Cloud State currently, I believe, tied. Final. St. Cloud thank State. You. Five to zero victory over the Colorado College go. Tigers. The CC Tigers fall on their new home rink. I believe it's their second year in that new rink out in Colorado it is. Springs. Gorgeous arena. St. Cloud State men's hockey program as I get a text from my mother saying it, this ball was in, so we're gonna have to see. I, that's if it is, not what they're looking at, Earnhardt. It is not what they're looking at. They're looking at fingertips. 
I think they're looking at fingertips to see if the ball, in if it was spots out. On the blocker and on the person digging in the back. This one gonna be close. Again, we have the replay review right in front of us here at the Rice Auditorium. Husky fans were doing the wave a bit earlier. The replay review gonna come to a conclusion. We look to the scoreboard. We wait, we wait, waiting. Waiting, Wayne State gets the point. Oh, I it thought it was St. Cloud State point. I'm not, not gonna Not over just yet. St. Cloud will lead 24-21. I got will a little too excited there, Earnhardt. I got a little too excited. Kelsey Cotto will serve. Gonna get this over. Kirshner, Barron tracks it. Rachel, blocked up front. Rossi can't handle 24-22. Rossi, yeah, not ready to dig that out. Not expecting it to come back either as the, the attack from Lindsay Rachel has been on point almost in this entire game. Cotta again to serve. St. Cloud still on match point. Foley, Barron, over to Rachel. Walker, Bramer, sent back over Foley here. Barron, Rossi, good night! St. Cloud State advances to the regional finals. They take down the number two team of the nation, Wayne State. What an outstanding performance by this Husky team, continuing to be resilient, strong, and working as a team. Wow, just just outstanding. This team has do gone through so much this year and has continued to be dominant, shutting down the Wayne State Wildcats in their own barn. This is such a big win for St. Cloud State. They take down number 12 Northwest Missouri State last night and then tonight they take down arguably probably the best team in the country Wayne State the Wildcats fall in their own barn their season has come to a conclusion and tomorrow it'll be Concordia St. Paul and St. Cloud State duking it out again but this time to go to the Elite Eight that's it. This is phenomenal, Earnhardt. This is, wow. St. Cloud State, I cannot believe it. I knew coming into today, this one was going to be oh so close. It was going to be tooth and nail. It was the big dogs taking on the big cats. But today, the Huskies prevail, and they beat Wayne State for the first time in their own building all year. St. Cloud State has done just an amazing job this year. They've really shown the resilience. And to be able to make those adjustments, you can't, stay, you can't say enough about the coaching staff. Coaching staff, head coach Chad Bregelman, Marcy Tumalolo, Jacob Voss, Morgan Penner. There's so many people that help out behind the scenes. I, I am so happy for this team. This team deserves it as we're going to have head coach Chad Bregelman come into the booth here. As he walks his way over. I only got like two minutes, all right? Chad, you come into today going against the number two team of the nation in their own barn. You take him down, and Kenzie Foley breaks a career high with 30 kills. I'm impressed. Earnhardt, that was, uh, that was fun volleyball. I tell you, I've been doing this for 20-some years. I've played a lot of, uh, seen a lot of good volleyball matches, been proud of a lot of teams, but holy cow, those, that was, that was like a big time heavyweight fight. I mean, do you see the swings and the blocks at the end of that back and forth? Both teams just absolutely hitting the crap out of the ball and uh, couldn't be proud of our women, but boy, that team on the other side, are they good or what? Th that first set, I, it was a toss up going back and forth to and fro. That first set, St. Cloud took it 30 to 28 off of a couple challenges from both coaches that really extended it. And Chad, you had two or three challenge wins tonight. Yeah, I mean, cripes almighty. It's like almost a streak there, but didn't didn't get the one at the end, but i really, really proud of him. I mean, I had no timeouts left. I can't take another challenge in the fifth set if it doesn't go our way, so I thought it was a good use of a challenge there. I hate how long it takes, but sometimes you've got to, it's worth the risk. We got the one late. That really helped us create a little bit of separation there, so. Chad, Chad I mean, what are you looking forward to? To what's what's the strategy going into Concordia tomorrow? This is a very talented team. What are you going to look to do? 
you know, we're going to just do the same things we've been doing. We played them on Sunday. Uh, you know, in this league, you get to play really great teams a bunch of times if you can keep winning and playing uh, playing great volleyball yourself. So from that standpoint, we're just going to get a little bit of rest. we gotta, we got to be a little more balanced, too, I think. I'm not sure we can just do it with two, uh, two attackers being pretty efficient. But Phoebe did a nice job of fighting back. You could tell she's super frustrated early on. I said, you got to trust yourself. you got to keep swinging. you got to do one, one good thing at a time and stuff. And she did, and really proud of her. Kenzie was amazing. Lindsay was amazing. Emma was great. Keely was great. It was a lot of fun. And you talk about Kenzie Foley having set a career high in kills tonight. How much does she mean to this team? Uh, Kenzie has another level. You know, I think tonight we saw that. She just took it to a whole other level, and it was a lot of fun watching her out there. That look on her face of determination. I even had to remind her, though, at one point, hey, make sure you still bring in the huddle because she's so focused, so locked in on that next ball. I said, you still got to be a great teammate out there. So it was and a lot of fun. And the thing, no, recently we've been calling Kenzie Foley the Terminator. She has lived up to that name tonight, and I'm sure she's going to want to celebrate this one. And tomorrow, Chad, just another game. Hey, we're excited about this one. We're going to enjoy this one for a little while, but thanks to all our fans watching. Nice job, guys. Nice, nice job. And ladies and gentlemen, that was head coach Chad Bragelman. St. Cloud State wins as they take down the number two team in the nation, Carl I know last Sunday against Concordia in the conference final, we said that was the best match of volleyball we have ever seen. I think after the first set of this one, it already beat it. I, yeah, yeah, it, absolutely, absolutely. And, I will, and I'll say the volleys were so back and forth. This is the, the – I have never seen this many volleys go this long in a single match of volleyball. It is arguably – I, actually, I will say it is the best match I've seen all year. It is. It was extremely competitive, exciting. There were ups and downs. It had everything. It, it was had, like it was like it was like an it action was movie. Perfect. It's the perfect story. It, it, it absolutely. And for Saint Cloud, Saint Cloud fans, it has the perfect ending. Absolutely. Speaking of endings, our season is not over. Tomorrow, 4 p.m. Saint Cloud State, Concordia Saint Paul, regional finals will be right here on 88.1 FM. KVSC, be there, Husky fans. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a phenomenal evening.